that was actually playing at Las Vegas earlier this year. Unfortunately, the band has now been disbanded because I've decided to go solo. And you miss me singing at the beginning as well, Tony. <laughs> What's happened? You may realize that next year, um, Critical Communications World is going back to Europe, to Paris. And you might, um, in these ages of austerity, because some of you may know that I have a house near Paris, and I have kindly um, offered IIR um, in order to save some money to hold the event in my garden shed next year. So you're all welcome, and thank you very much. Okay. Actually, I thought that was going to take a lot longer. I can talk for hours. But really, what we're here for is to listen to kind of the excellent speakers today. We'll probably um, be able to um, bring us all into the future kind of much better than, than somebody like me. So our first speaker is Mr. Radaida, who is general manager of Al Rawad IT Solutions, with many, many years of experience in IT. He has a number of publications, and he also tells me that he is actually included in this year's Who's Who. So we have really a, a very important person to open today's session. Over to you. Thank you, Peter. <coughs> Uh, good morning, every, uh, everyone, and um, uh, thank you for, uh, for having uh, me this morning um, uh, to give this presentation. I would like to start with uh, thanking uh, Motorola uh, for inviting me to give this uh, presentation on their behalf uh, at this event. Um, as you can see from uh, the first slide, uh, the uh, topic um, uh, for this is very much focused on command control centers uh, uh, that relate to the next generation uh, uh, network systems. Now, uh, when we think of uh, solutions, network solutions or infra <coughs> infrastructure solutions, uh, we always um, uh, think of four folds, uh, the command and control uh, uh, rooms, the applications that are used to uh, manage uh, uh, the, uh, the operations, uh, the, uh, the mean or the media for uh, transporting and, sorry, for trans uh, transferring the uh, voice data uh, video, um, uh, which is the network and uh, um, the sort of uh, devices, uh, mobiles, uh, BDAs, etc., that we use to uh, communicate uh, whatever we want to communicate. Now, uh, what do we need to communicate? Basically, voice, data, video. Uh, now, for each of these, uh, each of these requires certain capacity, certain uh, broadband, uh, certain kind of uh, uh, networks. Uh, If we look at this slide, sorry, the mic is. Uh, with this slide, I'm going to look at my pages because I don't see. Um, we we can tell that uh, we have uh, two uh, types of uh, networks: the private and uh, the public networks. Now, the private are mainly used for safety um, and, uh, systems. Uh, uh, like policing uh, uh, networks, for example. And uh, the public are used for public purposes like telecom uh, uh, companies and etc. So we can think of Tetra, we can think of uh, LTE, we can think of uh, Expedience, uh, we can think of um, uh, GSM, uh, 3GSM, etc., etc. Uh, again, uh, the story is all about the, uh, the voice, data, video, and which network can carry which of these three or a combination of, uh, of them. Um, we think uh, that the future is for LTE. Everybody believes in that, uh, but uh, how true is that? Um, I believe we need a few years down the road to, uh, to make such uh, a judgment.
Now, the thing that I like about this slide, basically, it, it looks at um, um, the, uh, the networks or the infrastructures <coughs> um, in uh, four tiers. Uh, the first tier is uh, very much text-based. Uh, the second one is um, very much communicating uh, images. And the, uh, the third one, we moved into live images. And the fourth one, uh, very much, uh, we moved into multimedia. Um, now, if you look at the, uh, the kind of networks that can carry uh, or can support uh, such tiers, the first tier, I believe the, uh, the uh, Tetra uh, system, the old one, uh, very much enough to support um, any text-based uh, uh, operations. The uh, second tier, um, we, uh, we need an advanced sort of Tetra. Uh, as well as the uh, GPRS. Uh, the third one, when it comes to uh, live images, uh, we look at Tetra 2, um, the, uh, the TEDs. Um, and the fourth one, um, very much you need LTE uh, just to support the future uh, dreams and the future uh, applications that we are looking into. Now, what is LTE? Um, I don't think I can add too much. The literature is there, and everybody is talking about LTE these days. Uh, again, uh, the question from my personal experience whether uh, the LTE will be the real future for communication or not, uh, I believe we need a few years down the road to answer this question. And this is uh, a personal uh, opinion. Uh, when Tetra came out, they thought that this is the end, this is the greatest thing on, on Earth, and uh, uh, this is a typical thing uh, with technology. You start with something new and you think it would last for, uh, for uh, forever, but uh, a few years down the road, someone com comes up with uh, a new technology and uh, very much uh, the first uh, thing uh, the, the new organization or the new technology starts to do is to hit the previous uh, technology. Um, there are many reasons for that, but this is the true, the, the truth. This is the fact that's what, uh, what happens in uh, an industry. The only exception that I noticed when it comes to technology, technology does, uh, does not change too fast, uh, is, is the Java language, frankly speaking. Um, uh, things started with old uh, languages. Every few years, uh, a new language comes and takes over the previous ones and makes the old ones look bad. Uh, except the Java. It came out in the early 90s and it's been 15, 16 years and uh, it's still leading the uh, programming languages um, and even in the real-time applications I see it uh, uh, leading that as well. Now, the applications, when we think of LTE, we think of Expedience, we think of WiMAX, we think of uh, uh, any of the uh, available network infrastructures. Um, why do we need these uh, uh, networks? Basically, to serve our purposes um, uh, by having uh, uh, the different applications to work out uh, uh, for us. Um, the, um, most important applications that I would see is the video surveillance. Um, I would think of AMBR, I would think of uh, BDAs uh, to uh, interconnect with uh, uh, the various applications and systems remotely. Um, now, all these applications are in place. Uh, some of them work well with some networks and still does not work with uh, some other uh, network infrastructures. Um, uh, manufacturers uh, limit uh, uh, the ability of the uh, implementers and uh, uh, the, uh, the project staff to, uh, to take care of such applications. And um, uh, per uh, a recent experience with one of the projects that Motorola led in, in Abu Dhabi, I was involved with that project for uh, uh, at least the first uh, uh, six, seven months. Um, we, we learned from that project um, uh, several uh, lessons. Uh, the, the lessons that I can think of at this moment, 
um, uh, first of all, uh, do not sign the contract before having uh, your uh, frequencies in a place and uh, before securing the frequencies from the TRA, for example, in UAE. Otherwise, you will um, end up wasting uh, six, seven months uh, before being able to start your project. And that's basically what happened with the Motorola project I just referred to. Uh, the uh, second uh, question, uh, as a vendor, uh, make sure that you bring your best staff uh, into the project. Do not bring me a second, uh, your second category or second class staff to take care of the project once you sign the project. Never, never feel that you secured the project in your pocket because it can run away from you at any moment, at any time. Um, and the, uh, uh, the, the other lesson that I would think of uh, basically has to do with the applications. Make sure that when you present the network, you present the set of applications that will work with that network to your client. Because the client is the sponsor and make sure that they are happy all the time throughout the way. And never ignore, whether intentionally or intentionally, <coughs> their uh, hopes, their wishes. Make sure that you satisfy what they expect from you. Make sure that you show them throughout the way that you are committed to the uh, project. Now, on the other hand, as uh, a client or a sponsor, if any of you is going to sponsor such a project, uh, it is very important that you show commitment to your uh, vendor because if you lose uh, your interest in the project and you show them that, they will try to escape from you. Their objective will be very much, we want to just finish this project and leave out of here. Um, uh, so these are some, some of the lessons that I personally learned <coughs> from, from uh, uh, such a projects. Uh, back to uh, this application, uh, uh, for example, the, uh, I do want to uh, just uh, put uh, more uh, emphasis on the importance of the AMPR applications because everybody knows uh, without an AMPR uh, system, um, a police officer probably can bunch in 80 to 100, 500, 1,000 cases every day, but with the system, um, you can track uh, thousands of uh, cases uh, because the system will work by itself. Um, another case is the adaptive video streaming, and this can um, happen uh, basically from uh, cameras, uh, mobile cameras in the cars, in, in uh, mobile cars, or from fixed cameras, and uh, I'm sure um, uh, by having the right network in a place, you can uh, have such a service. Just an example of uh, how to allocate the car and like access the camera remotely. Uh, this is uh, an example of fixed cameras. Um, the uh, availability of networks that support greater bandwidth will definitely enable uh, growth in data applications. Uh, command and control centers um, uh, apparently uh, by having the LTE in a place will become uh, multimedia data uh, uh, hubs. Um, uh, we believe that the increase in applications, the good applications, will improve both safety and efficiency and, uh, and the safety uh, um, uh, industry. Uh, public safety networks should be utilized by deploying all possible applications. And uh, the, uh, the last uh, point basically um, uh, highlights a fact that when you install uh, a network, you invest too much money in it. Um, even if a newer technology comes out, it try to utilize 
uh, your uh, existing or the, the, the network that you just installed. Uh, otherwise, it will be a waste of effort, a waste of time, a waste of money. Uh, and the uh, real utilization of any network uh, uh, infrastructure is by having all possible applications that serve uh, your, uh, your work purposes, uh, mainly in, in public or, or private uh, uh, safety sectors. Um, now, with such a projects, um, I would like to um, just uh, again uh, re-emphasize on some of the lessons that we learned from uh, the uh, recent project that we had with uh, Motorola in, in Abu Dhabi. Um, uh, again, the client should be happy all the time. Uh, because the client is very much your end user, your sponsor, and uh, there is always competition. There is always other uh, companies who try to put their noses into your project and try to convince the, uh, your sponsor that the technology that uh, you are trying to deploy or you already deployed is something old because anything when it comes like a year after, you can call it an old technology, and that's the case with, uh, with all technologies. So make sure uh, uh, that you keep uh, your client aware that you are uh, uh, very committed to the project. You are trying to provide them with the latest updates uh, on, uh, in, in the system. The, uh, if there is any upgrades, try to bring them on board, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure that uh, you hold uh, regular meetings with them and so on. And uh, as, as a client, uh, sorry, as, yeah, as a client uh, sponsor or uh, service receiver, make sure uh, that when you commit uh, to a project, uh, commit to it throughout the end. Uh, because if you allow others to interfere, uh, you will lose. You will be the first user. You will lose the, the money you invested in the project. Uh, you will be confused after some time, and you will not be able to uh, utilize the network and the effort that uh, uh, you invested in the, uh, the project. Um, uh, with such a project, you end up with good uh, lessons, with uh, sad stories. Uh, uh, the competition uh, is always from outside as well as from inside, because within the organization, let's say, uh, ex-police force when, uh, when they commit to uh, such a project, uh, w from within the, uh, the organization itself, there would be uh, supporters and there, there would be uh, some people who would, uh, would like to uh, stop your project, uh, who, who, uh, who are against your project. So make sure that you play the game right. It's uh, the political dimension when, when you come to uh, manage uh, such a projects. Bring the right people, the right project manager with uh, vast experience in project management, with great interpersonal uh, skills and the great attitudes. Uh, otherwise, you will be the loser. And uh, I believe in, uh, when you look at some of the statistics and the studies, uh, they say uh, the, uh, the rate the failure rate of uh, project um, can exceed probably um, high 70s, uh, low 80 percent, and uh, most of that uh, is due or is because of uh, the project managers themselves. So if you are a great project manager, regardless what you are managing, the project will succeed. Um, basically, that's what I wanted to share with you, that's what I wanted to say. If you have any questions, I would be glad to answer your questions. Um, thank you very much, Mohammed, for your kind of very honest and frank presentation. Is there ta there's time for one question from the audience. Which, can you just remember which technology were you using for? Uh, basically, um, we used the uh, Motorola Experience uh, technology. Yeah. At that time, there was the WiMAX and the Experience. Um, and we thought that Experience would be much mm. better than WiMAX to serve the purpose of, uh, for which the, the project was to be yeah. started. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Mohammed, also for staying on time. Thank you. Um, 
I don't have any chocolates, but do you like lollipops? Sure. Yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm just starting up a company, so I can't afford chocolates. Actually, don't tell IMS, because I stole them from their stand as well. So there you go, <laughs> Mohammed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker, I think, needs almost can, needs no introduction, but I'll give a very short one anyway. Um, it's Hanu Oronson. Yep, Eve, no, you're next. You're next. It's okay. And Hanu is going to explain to us um, the applications that are currently available on Tetra, and maybe just give us an insight into the applications that may be available in or definitely will be available in the future. Hanu. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I've only got four lollipops left. So <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about the possibilities that Tetra offers for applications. Like the previous speaker mentioned, it's good to use the network you have today already, and then you can add to that later with new technologies. And So one of the trends in this area is moving from just having some data features on the network to really having mission-critical applications. We have mission-critical voice today, but it's very important to use also the data side of the network to get your, to really build in mission-critical applications into your operations. We will look at some examples what can be done. So one of the things that is happening is that the office is already IT enabled. When your people are at the office, they have their computers, databases, email,